Hello, thank you all for joining IP and FSU London for the grand finale of the 50th anniversary celebration of FSU London. Um, today we're excited to celebrate with you all and we will have a presentation and video and then um, I will share a few ways at the end that you can stay involved with international programs. Um, so without further ado, I am delighted to hand it over to FSU London Director, Dr. Kathleen Paul. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. It is my absolute pleasure to host this, our grand finale, our look back to the future extravaganza of a celebration of FSU London's Golden Jubilee, 1971 to 2021. 50 years, five decades, and tens of thousands of students who have taken and continue to take the bold and exciting decision to study abroad in London. So, like any good history, let's start at the very beginning, which takes us to June 1971 and a chartered aeroplane landing at Heathrow with 73 brave adventurers. Brave adventurers who, having gone then to the Monarch Hotel in Cromwell Road, Earls Court, and claiming it as their base, thereby founded FSU London. And what did these founders find? Well, I think it can be fairly termed a decade of hope. They found a new decimal currency produced by Britain and the United Kingdom in honor of the impending joining of the United Kingdom with what would become the European Union in 1973. They found some great neighbors from around the world, Australia, the West Indies, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Ireland. They found the rise of social movements marching for equality and freedom. And they found a lot of long hair. Let's take a look at some of them now as they explored and discovered the 1970s in London. probably be caught by the presence of Mick Jagger in that last shot, but I confess my mind is all on Stonehenge. As an historian, I know why we don't clamber over the rocks anymore, but it doesn't mean I'm not still jealous. Now, one person who had that opportunity is Rosemary McGee, who was a student here in 1972. Here she is talking with one of our current students, Cecilia Desires. Let's listen as they share their experiences of studying abroad in London. Like what was going on during that time in Europe, at least? Because I know a little bit of what was going on in America, <laughs> not a lot. Yeah, so the the late the late sixties and early seventies were just a time of general, uh, almost universal uh, social movements where a lot of things were happening with the youth culture, mm -hmm. and so you know you mentioned. The Beatles, of course, this was a post Beatles era, but there was still that that kind of uh, introduced uh, vibrant youth culture um, across the world. There were people were wearing mini skirts. That that was a big deal. Um, the theater was being explored in different ways. They were it was very experimental. The music was very experimental. Um, in not just in rock and roll, but also classical music. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of the, the political issues, for example, the issue of the Vietnam War yeah. um, was um, a major issue and not just in America. In America, you're kind of secluded, you know, like you, and especially in Florida, like I only get to see the culture of my state and of my people and going abroad, I can see anything, especially in London, like it is so diverse. There's so many cultures. Um, obviously that was one of the reasons why I chose London. 
I, I went, as you know, 50 years ago. Hard to believe. <laughs> it was, London to me was the center of the world. I've gained a lot more confidence since I've been here because I'm truly independent. Like I came here not having any friends or anything, but when I went to FSU, I had friends from my hometown. So I truly was on my own and I started to learn more about myself and started to stand up more for myself too. And like, I definitely just have more trust in myself, which I think is a very important thing to have because a lot of people at my age do not have that. We don't really get that for a while. And I think it relates to what we were talking about before as being a young woman yeah. and um, not feeling that I wanted my life to be quite so sheltered or quite so constrained as the roles that were kind of set out for women at the time to pursue and to follow. I felt myself already kind of resisting those, even though I wanted many of the same things that women of many generations want. And I admired the women in my family and other uh, women in the world who'd done both very domestic things and also adventuresome things. But I wanted to create my own pathway. And of course, I couldn't leave the 1970s without mentioning Margaret Thatcher, the first female prime minister elected of the United Kingdom. Uh, Thatcher, of course, took Britain away from the social contract in place since 1945 and engaged in individualism and the Big Bang in the city, also engaging in a war to save the Falkland Islands some 8,000 miles away. Closer to home, Charles and Di got married. They produced the requisite heir and a spare. Now, Diana Spencer has a particular resonance for our buildings, but I'm going to leave that to my colleague to talk about a little bit later on. What else in the 1980s? Well, we moved up in the world. FSU London moved into new premises in South Kensington, the Queensbury Court Hotel. And in fact, you can see the hotel in these photographs that we're gonna look at right now of our 1980 students exploring their new neighborhood. Also in the 1980s, we had our first permanent director, Dr. Charles Wellborn, a decorated veteran. Now, Dr. Wellborn undoubtedly shaped the program in so many ways, but one of those ways from which we still benefit today is his decision to hire and work with London-based faculty. Now, I have the great good fortune to speak with the very first London-based faculty member, Brian Ellis, an actor and educator taught with FSU London for over 10 years and still today gives so much of his time and experience serving as a member of our management council. Now, when I met with Brian, I asked him what he thought about the evolution of the program, his manner of teaching theatre, and most immediately, his reaction upon first meeting and teaching US students. I, I was quite bowled over by the enthusiasm of American students because they were seeing things on site, as it were, yeah. rather than uh, from afar. And, and I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed my, my teaching. Uh, at that time, there was no Globe Theatre. Of course. There was just a plaque on the South Bank which said, on this site was the Globe Theatre which was burnt down in 1615 or something. And uh, I took the students to see the plug. And we went to the George Tavern, which is now a National Trust pub, but it's the last galleried uh, uh, pub in London and has the same format as 
the theatres of that period and an awful lot of Shakespeare plays were performed in the courtyard of pubs rather than in uh, theatres. So purpose-built buildings at that point. Exactly. Well, because you were still acting even as you were teaching. Well, exactly, right? yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I was usually playing eight shows a week and fitting in the teaching between uh, those the, the matinee days, so, you know. Straight from sort of classroom to stage or stage to classroom. Yes, exactly, yes. Did your yes. students ever come and see you perform? Yes, I, but I can't remember. I have a feeling they might have come to see the second fiddle on the roof, but I can't be sure. Uh, and well, then that would make sense because... That would have been 84. 84, and I think that's the date yeah. that... You're fairly certain your association with Florence That's State when I began. seem to think that it started, yes. Yeah. You blazed a trail, Brian. Yes. I as th the first London faculty member, I, so I well suppose, done. Yeah, I suppose so. When I first started, it was very much in its infancy. I mean, it was still a, a very, very interesting programme. Of course. But to see it today and the way it has expanded uh, is is just so rewarding for everybody, for Florida State University, for the students, for London as well, and for these buildings too, yeah. to have had a new lease of life. When I first saw them, they were semi-derelict, and here they are, you know, being put to such wonderful use. Brian closed there by talking about these beautiful buildings. He was referring, of course, to the seven 17th century townhouses, which FSU London now proudly calls home. It does so because by the 1990s, it was clear that not only had numbers in the programme grown, but so had the confidence that the programme was here to stay. Now, perhaps the students were drawn by the Spice Girls, Britpop, Harry Potter, Cool Britannia, Tony Blair, the first Labour government elected in 18 years, or perhaps my personal favourite, the manifestation of the continuing friendship between the United Kingdom and France, and indeed the whole European continent, by the opening up in 1995 of the Channel Tunnel. Whatever it was, the students came in great numbers and needed a permanent home. Responsible for finding that was Dr Jim Pitts, the current Director of International Programmes. Now when you see the buildings that caught Jim's eye in these photographs I'm about to share, when you see the state that the buildings were in, and that Jim chose then to buy these buildings and to allow them then and to help shape them to become what they became, I think you'll agree that Jim had what in the 1990s was known as the vision thing. So there's our new home. But what about its history? Who used to live here? How did it get built here? To tell us about that, I rely upon our senior associate director and esteemed historian of London, Dr. Lisa Bowers Isaacson. Thank you, Kathleen. In Shakespeare's day, the future site of FSU London in Bloomsbury was just agricultural fields. A mile or so east was the walled city of London. Less than a mile south from Bloomsbury lay the Royal Enclave of Westminster. But in the reign of Charles II, houses began to be built on Bloomsbury's fields. Thomas Risley, the Earl of Southampton, had a plan to create a neighborhood fit for himself and like persons of great social rank and wealth. This new urban space in 1665, named Southampton, later Bloomsbury Square, was the very first of the squares which would come to define the landscape of the West End of London. The square was joined to Tottenham Court Road by Great Russell Street. The seven townhouses of FSU London were developed from 1680. A newsletter announced in 1686 that the Earl of Thanet's son was born at Thanet House in Great Russell Street. Thanet House stood where buildings 100, 101 and 102 are now. Building 99, which now holds FSU's admin offices and reception, 
is an exquisite survival of a townhouse of the late 17th century designed for a person of quality. Here was a place to entertain, to impress one's guests with one's wealth and gentlemanly education with a classically themed ceiling painting. We do not know who lived at 99, but we know more about the inhabitants of Thanet House. In the middle of the 18th century, the house belonged to Topham Beauclair, great-grandson of King Charles II. Beauclair's wife was Lady Diana Spencer, eldest daughter of the Duke of Marlborough. Like her descendant and namesake, hers was a racy love story. She had been married to a notoriously philandering aristocrat. After four children, she moved out and rumors spread that she was pregnant by another man. In the divorce trial in 1768, a footman gave evidence that in the crucial period before she gave birth, her husband was never with Lady Diana, but Beauclair was frequently seen at night. Divorce was granted and two days later, Lady Diana married her lover. Topham Beauclair was very much the cultured gentleman. His great library in Thanet House held 30,000 books. He belonged to the Literary Club, which included many of the leading intellectuals of the day. Friends admired Beauclair's wit, but not his poor personal hygiene or his terrible temper. When he died in 1780, several of the Literary Club deemed it a benefit to his widow, despite her ensuing financial difficulties. Lady Diana Beauclair, however, was a formidable character. Samuel Johnson was famously not charmed by her notorious sexual exploits, but she was a skilled artist and forged an independent career as a painter and book illustrator. Her drawings of children were used by Josiah Wedgwood. The townhouses that make up FSU London thus have a gloriously cultured history. In 1759, when Beauclair was resident in Thanet House, the British Museum opened its doors in Great Russell Street to all studious and curious persons. We at FSU London are proud to provide a centre for our studious and curious students and to carry forward into the future this tradition of learning and culture in Bloomsbury. Thanks, Lisa, for that wonderful history. Let's now take a look at some of our curious and studious individuals as they explored their new home in the 1990s. And so to a new millennium. Fortunately, the fear about Y2K was wiped out by the building of a giant Ferris wheel on the south bank of the Thames. A Ferris wheel, by the way, which was meant to be temporary, rather like its cousin, maybe, the Eiffel Tower over in Paris. Both were meant to be temporary structures but became permanent due to popular demand. Now, the London Eye celebrated its sixth anniversary in 2006. Official London, we celebrated our 35th. And we did so by partying like it was 1685. Let's have a look at some photos. Well, it looks like they had a great deal of fun there. And with good reason, right? The uh, 2000s were a decade of great growth for FSU London. We expanded not only in numbers, but in the different ways of teaching. Uh, for example, we started a new programme, the First Year Abroad programme. So for the first time, allowing freshmen to come and spend a year, their very first year over in London, giving them thereby the experience of a liberal arts college, smaller classes, a lot of attention, uh, opportunity to grow as individuals, but with all of the backup 
of a top 20 US public university over in Tallahassee. What could be better? Now, of course, our students have always used the streets of London for experiential learning. In the 2000s, we also gave them the chance to use the offices of London when we opened up an internship programme. Here to tell us a little bit about that programme is our assistant director, Katie Berenger. Thanks, Kathleen. FSU London began its internship program over 20 years ago. The program provides students from FSU's main campus and our partner universities with the opportunity to participate in an internship during their time studying abroad in London. With placements from parliament to record labels, finance to public relations, sustainability to analytics, just about every major in between, our students have been able to kickstart their careers while studying abroad in London through these exciting experiential learning opportunities. Coming up next, we can't wait to hear first-hand experiences from some of our internship alum, university partners, and students on the ground sharing a day in the life of being an intern. Let's hear what they have to say. I was able to intern with a member of parliament, which was just so cool. I am now a news anchor and reporter in Dayton, Ohio. I've been in the news industry since I graduated from Florida State in 2017, and it has truly become my passion. Going to London was one of the best experiences of my life, just being able to live in another country for four months and then add working as an American in another country for four months. It really pushed me out of my comfort zone, but it was a really transformative experience. And of course I made some incredible friends along the way. My flatmates became like sisters and they will always hold a special place in my heart. We would meet up after work and you know, go to dinner and go to pubs. And it really felt like we were just living in London and taking on the world together. It, it was amazing. It, it helped me learn a lot about myself, uh, a lot about uh, another culture, obviously, um, a, a lot about how, you know, an office, a professional office works and, and specifically how a political office works. I was uh, with a member of parliament and um, I'm actually still in politics now. I'm, I'm working as a legislative assistant for a Florida House rep. But I, I would say it, it, it led to a lot of growth. Uh, I mean, it, it helped me um, kind of understand more of where we were as, as people, as Americans, as uh, students uh, in the world. It was an, an experience that I wouldn't trade for the world. Having the opportunity to study abroad with FSU London International Programs really helped my career in the position that it placed me um, to feel confident, to feel cultured, to have a unique uh, experiential knowledge from not only the textbook, which can only take you so far, but into the real world where you can actually apply principles for what you learned and principles that you may not have even used from what you learned because it's real world. My career a civilian side is a urban planner for the city of Nashville and that also was spurred by the opportunity that I had in London which was to intern for the city of London, a corporation, which is basically their city government. So again, that internship was amazing. I have the opportunity to be in my career field and I'm actually working, being a young student, being an intern, still doing my graduate research. So to combine all of those uh, facets of where I was personally uh, and as a student was just the opportunity to really understand and hone new skills. I am ecstatic to celebrate and to honor and to be privileged enough to have even had the opportunity to participate in FSU international programs. 50 years, no doubt about it, 50 more is guaranteed to come. Our students participate in a six or seven week internship experience here in London. And quite frankly, I can't think of a better place in the world to learn about business than here in London. So we are so grateful uh, for the partnership that we have had uh, with the FSU Study Center. We love the facilities here, uh, wonderful classrooms, wonderful flats. Uh, it's just a wonderful experience uh, for our students and, and they really have thoroughly enjoyed uh, their experience here. I can't tell you of a, a GLS alum uh, who looks back on this experience and, and cannot remember it fondly. So, Thank you for the opportunity uh, to join this experience and enjoy this uh, celebration with you. And we want to say once again, happy birthday. And if I may, it would, be, would not be University of Tennessee if I didn't end this conversation with Go Vols. Mind-blowing to be in a city where everywhere you go, there are just hundreds of years of people's lives and stories to learn about. Having an internship on such a global scale is going to make me a much more competitive candidate for jobs in the future, which I'm so grateful for. And 
if I can handle an internship in London, I think I could probably handle anything. Today I'm headed to the Tube to get to my internship as a parliamentary intern in the office of Tulip Sadiq. My internship is here on Winchester Road, 21 Winchester Road. Hi, these are my colleagues in the constituency office, Jordan and George. Hi everyone, I'm Jordan. Hi, how's it going? George, nice to, well not meet you all, but meet the teachers for classmates. Yes. Yeah! Alright guys, here I am at Cargo Rooms 39 in London. First day at Hotbox. Let me take you guys in here. We've got some offices as well as, uh, as, well as the studio back here. So I'm here at Hotbox in uh, Studio 5. Just met with uh, Matt, who's the head of production and the rest of the team, and he's showing me around everything. We've got six uh, studios here and some offices. Hey guys, it's my second day at work. I've met all the people I'm working with. Here they are. And they are hard at work here at Hotbox finding uh, artists to fill all of our uh, concert dates. So um, the whole team is in a meeting right now, but uh, we have Presley here and at the office with us today. So. Uh, we, uh, I'm on, I'm on dog duty. Isn't that right? We're here at Old Queen's Head, a uh, pub here in London, and we're gonna go inside and meet the bands and have a good night. So, the show is going on, we're currently on our second act. I'll take you guys in there and show you uh, what the room looks like now. Amazing. Nobody can say that an FSU London internship doesn't open doors for you. Now, you heard me talk earlier with Brian Ellis about the joys of teaching drama. So what do we do next? We founded an entire programme dedicated to the teaching of drama and theatre. Here to talk about that is the director of Theatre Academy London, Mark Wheatley. We began Theatre Academy London in 2008. This was a wonderful new departure for us and something of a shot in the dark. We already had a number of students from theatre school at FSU coming to us in the fall, but we decided that this was the opportunity to branch out and offer the programme year-round to students of theatre from all over the US. Whether it was the drawing power of London theatre or our wonderful faculty of actors and writers and teachers, but students came. They came small numbers to begin with and then ever larger. Now we have hundreds of theatre students who can happily call TAL and FSU London their home. We're glad that we're part of their development as they go on to make careers in the theatre and in film and sometimes to the relief of their parents in something quite different. Now we're branching out again and we're offering a new programme at TAL. This is our musical theatre programme. As everybody knows, theatre students are energetic and excitable, and now we're putting the whole thing to music. So we can't wait, and we take it as a sign of the energy here at FSU London and its ability to innovate and continue to grow. Finally, we asked some of our alums to say something about their experience at TAL, and this is what they said. TAL is a really special program for a lot of reasons. I mean, it really gives you a diverse look at all that London theatre has to offer, both on the West End, but also in lovely regional theatres. So you really get the best of new writers and original work that then can inspire you in your own work. And I think the thing that makes it the best is the faculty. We really have amazing artists who really encourage independent thought and 
push you to expand your perspectives and challenge you to be the best artist that you can be. And ultimately, Italia has inspired me to move back to London to continue my career. The classes that we took, the teachers that we had, the shows that we saw, were all just so memorable. And I'm very grateful that I decided to study abroad in a different country, specifically London, and explore the United Kingdom as a whole. Hi, my name is Deandra Pendleton Thompson. I studied in London in the spring of 2014, and I'm so fortunate to now be working as a television writer on the upcoming series, Star Trek Prodigy, and I'm also writing my first feature with a major studio. I'm super thankful for my time at TAL. Um, the thing that I loved most about it was the immersion into a cultural mecca. Uh, whether it was weekend trips to places like Brick Lane Market or Portobello Market, um, whether it was going to you know, museums or, or seeing shows, just getting to explore a place that was completely um, you know, new and so huge, expansive, it opened me up to possibilities. And I found that just being on a college campus, you kind of get stuck into the humdrum of, of college life and that kind of a routine. But being at Tao, it felt like the sky was the limit. Feeling like the sky's the limit. It really doesn't get much better than that, especially when you combine it with coming to London for the Olympics, the Diamond Jubilee, the Scottish referendum, which resulted in Scotland staying inside the United Kingdom, the Brexit referendum, which resulted in the United Kingdom going outside the European Union, and Mexit, which resulted in something you might characterise as half in, half out. Anyway, more happily for us, it was the 45th anniversary of FSU London, and we celebrated with a party at the London Transport Museum. And that will explain a lot of the buses that you're going to see in this montage of students in the 2010s. And now here we are celebrating our 50th anniversary. And if there aren't quite 50 ways to study abroad in London, it's pretty darn close. Come take a course in accounting or astronomy, classics, chemistry, communication, English, history, hospitality, interior design, international affairs, sociology, philosophy, photography, religion, urban and regional studies. Or maybe you'd like to come and take a curriculum focus program just on your major. Sure, we can do that. Come and study in choral and instrumental music, communication science disorders, documentary experience, Harry Potter and fantasy literature, international affairs, psychology. And not only is there a choice of what you can study, you get to choose for how long you study in London. We've got programs now running from 10 days, 27, 54, 88, 105, 298. A veritable cornucopia of choice. And making that choice are our students. You'll remember that when we started, we had 73 students. I'm delighted to say that just before the pandemic, we had 10 times that number of students at FSU London. And we continue to grow, not only drawing in more students from more disciplines in Tallahassee, but forging new relationships with partner universities across the United States, leading to over 1,500 students calling Great Russell Street home. And quite a good place, I think, to bring our grand finale today to a close. Let's do so, though, by listening to two more people who bookend FSU London, 
1971 to 2021. Mary Balthrop, student on the first program in 1971, and Montse Zaran, a first year abroad student who came here first in fall of 21. Let's join them at the very beginning of their program when they've just arrived and let's hear what they get up to. I put my suitcase up in that room and I immediately left the study center and went walking around the streets of London, exploring and um, somehow managed to get myself to Carnaby Street. And because that was the, the end happened in place at the time. And I, I think it was a goal. It might have just been a happenstance, but I got there and um, had a meal in a cafe and then continued walking and um it opened up London for me. I just remember getting off the car and walking up to 99 and just thinking, wow, like this is really happening. And same as you, we left all our things, didn't unpack a thing and just left. Then started walking around. We were really hungry. So we just we wanted to find a place to eat and we just started walking. <laughs> and I think you don't realize how big London is until you actually get lost. It changed what I thought about too because it was during that time that I began to realize that I had this abiding sort of interest and sense of place and what what home means to people I later wrote my master's um, thesis on that topic and I think all that started because of my experience in London. A few weeks ago um, Trafalgar Square had a protest about um, Putin's invasion in Ukraine and I I uh, personally went to that, and I, I have never seen anything like that. I think it's been one of the most eye-opening experiences of my life, um, and I am actually majoring in international affairs, and I think having, witnessing that has really been the reassurance I needed for um, my major and how much we can do and how much, you know, how global things are. Like, you wouldn't, I've never seen Trafalgar Square so crowded in my life. Also, at the time that we were there in 1971, it was um, a time of turbulence in the what was what's referred to as the Troubles. The conflict in Northern Ireland made it such that 3,000 people decided to leave the north of Ireland and, and move to the Republic because the Troubles had gotten so um, bad or... And... Um, John Lennon's song, Imagine, you know that song? Yes, I love that it, song. It, it was released in October of that year. And all of us were singing it all around the study center. Oh, <laughs> that is a core memory. That's a core memory of FSU Lennon, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have the, the Peace Jubilee happening right now. So I mean, celebrations take care of the summer, so I won't actually be here for that, but 70 years on the throne, and I'm here. Isn't that amazing that yeah. she's been on the throne 70 years and survived COVID? And survived COVID. Amazing. Yeah. Like, I, I know that FSU London, it doesn't matter what I do, where I go, or whatever mm. it is my plan is for the future, this is something I'm going to take with me for the rest of our lives. And this is something that you and me are going to have in common for the rest of our life. Forever. <laughs> it's been 50 years between us, which is amazing. Monse and Mary are right, of course. The time you spend at FSU London really will stay with you for a lifetime. And of course, none know that better than our alum watching tonight. You have lived this experience. You have given so much. You have contributed the richness and the substance that has made FSU London what it is today and what it will be for another 50 years. Thank you for joining us for our grand finale today. Thank you for being with us throughout this year of glorious celebrations. We really couldn't have done it without you. They wouldn't have been a 50 years without you. So thank you for everything that you've given. Now it seems only fitting then that we should close with our alarm. You'll remember, I'm sure, at the end of every semester, the ceremonial taking of a photograph. Well, let's take a look now at some of those photographs across the years. And as we do so, let's listen to some students talk about what FSU London has given them. Happy birthday from FSU London here in Great Russell Street to all of FSU London, wherever you may be, across the United States and beyond. Happy 50th birthday. Thank you. This experience has truly been one of a kind. 
I've learned so much about myself and found a city I can truly call home. Thank you for a semester I will never forget. I have never felt such a sense of belonging. Every single aspect and facet of the program made my happiest and best version of myself. Studying abroad at FSU has made me into a more confident and self-assured person. I've become more independent and I feel ready for my life beyond college. FSU London shows tremendous love and care for its students. The excursions were fantastic. The experiences I've had will be treasured for the rest of my life. My favorite part of the semester was discovering things about myself through my exploration of the city. Everyone says that study abroad changes you, and I would roll my eyes and go, yeah, sure it will. I can most definitely say that it changed me in ways I can't put into words, all for the best. I realized how strong I was, how much I know already, and how much more learning I still have to do, but I would have never known how far I could push myself if I didn't come here. What a way to spend my first semester of university. This is definitely an experience I will be talking about for years to come. My experience in London has taught me to be alone without being lonely, and how to speak up for myself when something isn't right. I'll be returning to America a fuller and more whole version of myself. FSU London changed me into a more open-minded, confident, and optimistic person. I'm thankful for the beautiful friends I have made, the opportunity of experiencing in a new culture, delving into the history of London, and having the time of my life. My favorite part of the semester was making amazing friends and experiencing London and the world with them. Grateful for FSU London for broadening my horizons and introducing me to lifelong friends. Thank you all so much for attending today and thank you for that wonderful, wonderful presentation, Dr. Paul and all of the FSU London staff who worked on that. I do want to share a few ways that you can stay involved with international programs. Um, so I'm going to share my screen really quickly here. Um, so we are always looking for photos, videos, and memories, just because the FSU uh, 50th anniversary celebration is over for now. It doesn't mean that uh, we, we don't want your, your memories. We still want to share all of that with um, our followers on social media. We're always looking for ways to share photos and videos. So if you have any that you haven't shared yet and you want to share them with us, please email us at ip-media at fsu.edu. Um, another thing you can do is join the alumni Facebook group, which I will try and put in the chat here so that everyone can find it. Um, so that's a way to stay connected with other alumni and stay up to date on events that are happening with FSU London. Uh, so please go ahead and join that if you're on Facebook. Um, and of course, you can always follow us on social media as well at FSUIP, where we will share um, a variety of things coming up um, related to international programs. And then of course you can give the gift of international education by donating um, and you can find that donation link on our website which is international.fsu.edu so you can donate to student scholarships and things like that if you want to give back um, to international programs and uh, with that, I just want to say thank you again so much. We will be posting a video recording of this presentation on our YouTube, and we will send that out to participants who signed up for this event as well. Um, so please keep a lookout for that. And thank you again so much, everyone, for attending. Please keep in touch. Thank you. Um, and for those asking for group photos and things like that, please email us at ip-media at fsu.edu and we would be happy to try and get those to you as well. Thanks so much.